It's like an old song I used to know A melody floating soft and low And it's bringing me, bringing me back home I see you in my happy times You are my muse in every song I write And you'll carry me, you'll carry me on through Just like you always do So follow me I'll show you how love should be And even if I could change anything Hi, welcome to Food for Thought, the new cooking show that aims to build bridges between communities, neighborhoods, families, and friends by exploring each other's culinary traditions. I'm your host, Lloyd Carlos, creative director and editor-in-chief of Classic Modern. I thought there's no better way to start this series than to start with a country that's rich in history and culture and has a very, very deep culinary recipe library. We're talking, of course, of Italy. In mid-August, Italians celebrate Ferragosto. Ferragosto comes from two Latin words, Ferie Augusti, or Feast of Augustus. It commemorates the time when Augustus Caesar gave peasants the time off to celebrate the summer harvest and to worship Roman deities. Historians believe that the Pax Romana, or Roman peace, lasted so long because the Romans allowed whomever they conquered to celebrate their own holidays and to worship their own gods. This was allowed as long as they celebrated Roman holidays and worshipped the Roman gods as well. This, of course, made it impossible for Jews and Christians who believe that there is but one God. Ironically, the Catholic Church learned from the Romans and adopted and adapted pagan holidays and traditions. Ferragosto is a prime example as it is simultaneously Festa de la Sunta, or Feast of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, Asuncion de la Virgen in Spanish, celebrated on August 15. There isn't a set menu for Ferragosto. The idea, of course, is to celebrate the bountiful harvest of tomatoes, bell peppers, oregano, etc., and put it in a dish that's both simple and heartwarming. Apart from various cured meats and cheeses, polo alla romana is a delectable dish that seems to take center stage during Ferragosto. It is a tomato-based simple chicken stew that really takes advantage of the sweetness of bell peppers when in season. The stew is left to simmer for hours until all the flavors have melded together, the sauce is thick and rich, the flavor is deep, and the chicken meat is falling off the bone. It can be served with pasta and a good crusty bread to sop up the sauce. Wine, of course, is always a good thing. I personally prefer mine with a crisp vermentino or pinot grigio. Well, let's begin. First, dry the chicken thoroughly. This allows the chicken to sear instead of steam when you place it in the hot pan. Then, season the chicken with salt and pepper. Turn all the heat in the pan that I'm going to be using and what I'd like to do is to start it off with a little bit of flavor before I put the chicken in. Um, so I'm going to be using pancetta. Ideally, um, in, in the recipe that I'm going to be writing, um, I would like to use 
guanciale instead. I think for me, guanciale feels a lot more room um, than, than, than the pancetta, but both, you know, either one can do. Um, it could also be bacon if you want it. Um, but this is the pancetta. We've cut it in, uh, we've diced it basically, um, and I'm going to throw it in the hot in the pan until it renders. And while that uh, fries away, um, it renders away. While that's rendering away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flour, let's say about a cup of flour, would be enough for this chicken. Now, most recipes don't call for flour at all. So why am I doing it? I'm doing it for two reasons. One, once the pancetta is rendered, um, I wanted the chicken to soak a little bit of that oil first. Um, and the chicken wouldn't do that. I don't think the chicken would really do that if I just fried it directly um, without, without anything. That's the first thing. And the second thing also, um, is, is to add a little bit, obviously, of, of crispiness to the, to the chicken. Um, but more importantly, and the most you know, important of all, is that the flour, um, depending on your tomato um, that we're going to be using later on, um, it could be a little bit more watery, it could be thicker. Um, the flour will make sure that you have a thicker sauce to begin with. Um, it's sort of how you're going to do it. Also, Buko, it's, it's, it's how you do most of the different stews. Um, e either you, you add the flour a little bit later or add it during the searing process. And in this case, I'm adding it during the searing process. So let's dredge that. Oh, let me get. After putting flour on chicken, check on your pancetta or guanciale. If the oil has rendered and the guanciale or pancetta are crisp, take them out and set them aside. Next, toss some garlic in oil and to make sure that they don't burn and ruin your sauce, take them out when browned. Now saute your peppers. When caramelized, remove the peppers and set aside. And now we'll deglaze the fat. But what I'm using is any kind of white wine. I have a Tuscan um, dry white wine here. Um, and I'm going to put about a cup of it into the pan to deglaze it. Get those brown bits. With all that flavor, the garlic and the chicken, 
the pancetta or guanciale if you had it, which I don't. And the, I'll let the alcohol burn off in a little bit. Next, add four tablespoons of unsalted butter. Then add one can of whole tomatoes pureed. Then add our chicken back to the pan. In retrospect, I should have used a bigger pan, but try to fit it as best as we can. I think that's pretty much all we can fit there. A little bit of chicken stock. Let this simmer, partially covered, for about an hour. After an hour, add the peppers and let it simmer for another 45 minutes or until the chicken meat is falling off the bone. You can also have this for a weekday dinner using Instapot. Just reduce your liquid in half so that your sauce is rich and thick. There's some advantage to doing this ahead of time, um, like the day before. You're able to cool this too and skim off the boya that's on top. After this has been cooled, put them in a platter, arrange them accordingly, and sprinkle Pecorino Romano on the top. And then put it in the oven at 350 degrees until the cheese has melted. I think it's ready. I can smell the cheese. I bet it's bubbling. Wow. Just out of the oven. Well, there you have it. Polo a la Romana. Pasipo de Until next time, 
and just going heartless. Don't forget, live your neighborhood and love your life. And to all our Italian friends celebrating around the world, Buon Fetagosco.